Good morning. Uh, I have never in 48 years not gone to church for 90 days. Uh, so this is my first Sunday back after being gone for 90 days. Uh, and I uh, was here the other night for the, uh, the New Year's Eve service and that was a tremendous blessing. Uh, Pastor Michael has invited me to uh, take a Sunday later in the, uh, in the month of January to share with you uh, a more fuller message, but I'd like to just kind of bring some greetings on behalf of my sweet wife, Gail, who's with us. She's back, back right over there, right over there. Uh, the Bible and the newspapers, headlines and the news on the cable stations go together, don't they? Uh, the events that the Bible says are going to take place are actually happening right before our very eyes. I was so thrilled to be here New Year's Eve, uh, New Year's Eve because uh, as Pastor Michael went from the book of Daniel through the New Testament into the book of Revelation, uh, a little bit of an insert here. In the New Testament, one in every 25 verses speaks about the second coming of the Lord. And the second coming of the Lord is the main focus now of God's plan of redemption. He was prophesied to come, he came, he finished his work on the cross, he's been gathering a church, a bride unto himself through the Holy Spirit, and now he's uh, waiting, uh, he's preparing a place for us in heaven, and he's going to return. So uh, from God's perspective, the next action plan from heaven is for Christ to return. And for some reasons, many churches never open the book of Revelation or never speak about prophecy. And I did want to, just to encourage you that, uh, uh, well, let me tell you what Peter said here in First, Second Peter chapter three, I'll just read this. He says, uh, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Um, both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conduct and godliness looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness uh, dwells. And I was talking to Pastor Michael going home on New Year's Eve, and I said, uh, you know, in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, the New Testament, Jesus taught, and so did the apostles. Uh, they taught all the time about the coming of Christ. And if you if you look at any portion of Scripture that has to do with the last days, it doesn't just say there is something called the last days. It says here are the things that are going to be happening in the last days. Very very clear. So the truth of his second coming is laid out and then the, the things that are going to be happening at the time he does come are laid out for us as well. And so um, I just wanted to encourage you, uh, you know, the Bible says to be uh, wise concerning evil and to, uh, uh, like it says here, what kind of person should we be? The thing is, if we don't know that Jesus is coming, then there's no real impetus for us to be concerned about, well, how should we be living? But since we do know that he is coming, and I was sitting here the other night and I wrote in my Bible, or my, my notebook here, I don't write in my Bible, you know that, it's a sin for me. But I was, <laughs> I was writing, Jesus, you are coming. You, know, you, you forget that. I mean, it's there, never really goes away, but it's not always right here in front of you. Uh, in the book of 1 John in chapter uh, 3, the apostle says that uh, he that hath this hope in him, the person who is aware of the, the fact that Christ is coming, uh, purifies themselves. 
it's similar to when you're driving on the highway. You might be breaking the speed limit a little bit, but as soon as you see that police car back there, what happens? You slow down, don't you? And if you're an expert at this, you know how to not make the car do this. They, are, they, are, they, they already know what the story is. But the fact that you know there's authority behind you, what do you do? You drive differently, don't you? Jesus is coming. And uh, we want to be found in him, pressing on like Paul the Apostle spoke of for the prize of the upward call of Christ. And so uh, it's thrilling to see our pastor uh, digging in and showing us the events that are unfolding that are supported by what the scripture says. And then we'll be going through the rest of the book of Isaiah, but uh, just a couple of more minutes here. So 90 days I've been gone and on what's called a sabbatical, and the Lord has been faithful to help me in those 90 days. Um, it's really the last chapter, the last chapter of my life, a new and last chapter, uh, to be retired and waiting to depart for heaven. But uh, the, the first month was a little bumpy, I can tell you that. Um, and then I kind of settled down during the second month, and then I've just been sleeping for the last 30 days. No. <laughs> No, I've been thrilled. I've been absolutely thrilled to be retired. You know, the Bible says there's a time for everything. There's a time to work, and there's a time to stop working. In the Old Testament, the Levites couldn't even go into their work until they were about 30, I think. And they only worked for 20 years, I think, and then they, they retired. And they worked for 20 years because they had hard work. They were slaughtering animals, picking things up 24 hours a day. And so this is now the time for me to enjoy a new part of my life. And uh, I'm so thrilled and so at peace about the fact that the Lord has brought us our new pastor here. I can't, uh, I mean, you, you can well imagine if you've invested 44 years of your life in this spot here, you're not just wanting to say, oh, who, you know, any Tom, Dick, and Harry, you can come up here and do this. Oh, no, 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 no. I am so, so happy, and uh, he has my full support, um, and uh, I'm not sure, well, never mind, I'll stop there, I don't want to go on there. But really the greatest blessing of, uh, at this particular time, is the peace that I have in my heart, and being able to enjoy my time now at home with my wife, uh, there's no stress of having to go here or go there, and um, that's new for the both of us. So uh, I love my animals, my pets, I love my son Robert, and our family relationships have really uh, drawn close together, and our home is uh, normal. We have our challenges like anyone else, but we're experiencing a closeness that we've never had before. Uh, and uh, moving forward, um, in terms of my function as a Christian, um, at this particular time, I see myself as working to support the vision of our pastor here in mentoring leaders, mentoring people who want to lead, who want to serve. You guys that have been in a career for you know 30 or 40 years, you know what it's like to be there and you know what it's like to have a younger person coming and you're able to help them because you've, you've been down that road, you've made all of the mistakes <laughs> that you could make, and you're able to assist them, how valuable that is. So we'll, we'll be hearing more about that, and, and then also personal discipleship. Uh, I love to do these things, and so I'm looking forward to it. And oh, I, he, Pastor Michael did say I could come and speak one, probably the, maybe the last Sunday in, in, uh, in January, but I'm gonna speak today. Let's open our Bible, no, I'm kidding. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, I love you guys, and uh, I want to be the best congregant I can be. You know, all my life I've encouraged you, be a good Christian, come to church, give, support, find your gifts, uh, don't fight, don't squabble, don't be divisive, work. And so I want to live that out now, I'm no longer this guy. I was that guy, but now I'm a different guy, I have a different responsibility from God, and I'm thrilled to do it, so thank you so much, and God bless you guys. Huh?